Welcome to Atlanta, Georgia, Bobby Dodd Stadium and the home of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. The rambling wreck is here and these fans have been waiting since early in the day to get this one cranked up. We're really looking forward to this matchup. You've got a team that's made its way into the top 25, now trying to pass an all-important road test. As we'll see, the number 11 team in the country, the Florida State Seminoles, taking on another team from the ACC, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, let's get this thing started. And the Yellow Jackets will kick it away to start us off. He'll start the return inside his five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. The Seminoles offense takes field for the first time today. And this wide receiver, he's the linchpin to the offense. They want to make sure they find a multitude of ways to get him the football. And it's a risk-reward scenario on defense when you're trying to cover this guy, Reese, because you play man coverage, you risk him running by you and catching deep balls, you play too much zone, and then he can hurt you after the catch. A lot of different ways that this guy is very dangerous. You are talking about making it easy for an offensive coordinator to pick up bunch of yards on first down make that second down really really manageable that's a great job by the offense that kind of pick up on first down and you can take a shot here on second and short the Knowles get enough to move the chains I love when players understand situations and they understand where the first down marker is and they understand where I got to get to a lot of people you'll see run north south and try to bounce out wide and make big plays Sometimes it's not about making big plays. Sometimes it's about getting that first down to make sure I get an extra set of downs instead of trying to make those big touchdown runs. It's a reverse. That one did not go well. Tackled in the backfield for a loss of six. What a great job on the backside of the defense staying. A lot of times the run looks like it's going the other direction. What happens? You start to chase. Nope. These guys stayed home and played their assignment, and that's why they had success. And here comes the offense on second down. Running back searching for a hole. A collision, and he stopped at the 27 after picking up one. And the running back didn't get much there. Nice job on the defense. You can tell they're focused in on this running back, on this run game, being physical, getting knockbacks, and limiting his carries. Ball's at the 27. This offense facing a third and long. He's looking downfield to throw. Catch in the middle, it's Benson. And Shore tackling there to keep him from getting to the first down marker. They allowed the completion, but this defense was swarming to keep them away from that first down line. Yeah, and you allow completions in those third down situations underneath the sticks, and you come up and rally, and everybody flies to the football. That's great execution by this defense. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. They make the stop, but there is a penalty marker down. Let's see what the call is. Personal foul. Personal foul. Welcome to kick the kicker. kicker. Defense. Defense. So the decision has been made, and the coach will take the penalty. This offense has a first and ten. They are flat bailed out by the defensive penalty. They'll pick up four, second and six coming. Nice run there on first down. You know, this is a running back that gets better as the game goes on. So they're going to want to make sure they keep feeding him the football and let him get lathered up. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. This guy can throw it. Throws to the wide out. A beautifully placed ball to the outside and the toe drag for the big pickup. Nice catch there. I'll tell you, the, the seminal passing attack has come a long way over the years. When I was playing against them back in the day, they were in the eye formation every single play. Maybe it was play action. Maybe it was a shot play to the perimeter of the field. Now, they've got guys running all different kinds of routes, playing at different tempos, lining the ball over the field. This dude is a guy you just have to know where he is every single snap. Knocked down, but not before he crossed into the red zone and picked up four yards down to the 17.
Solid pick up a four on first down and second and six. Trying play action. Fires to the wide out. He's got it. He'll be stopped just short of the end zone, but they'll have it first and goal. I really like this slot receiver because of his shiftiness, and you see that on his route run. Really, really nice job creating separation for his QB. And the Seminoles trying to pay off the threat on first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. And if you want to bring all your tight ends in the game, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring in more linebackers, more defensive linemen. Get ready for the run. Less speed on the field, especially when you get down here in the red zone. I feel like I can match up man-to-man -man with those tight ends in the back end. Nice job understanding a run was coming. They're trying to slam it in. And he's going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Seminole! You take advantage of tendencies when you set that opening script, and man, their film study showed up there. I think the offensive coordinator, it's almost as if he knew what the defense was going to be playing. He knew the personnel. He knew the different looks and coverages and fronts that they were going to see. And that offense, they just chomp up yardage moving down the field to score in that opening series. Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. And he's got the extra point, and it's 7-0 to start this one. They put together a 65-yard drive for the score and close the deal with a three-yard touchdown run. Kickoff team lining up to send this one away. And here's the return. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. The Yellow Jackets offense will try to get something started with their first possession. One way to mitigate the explosive capabilities he has on the outside is be physical with him, and this dude will do that. He will do that, and you don't see a lot of offenses take the top off this deep because of this guy roaming around in the middle of the field. He is a true center fielder, so this receiver is going to have to make plays. I just does such a great job of getting guys on the ground. A lot of people are in position, but he makes plays, so him versus a dynamic wide receiver on the outside would be a great matchup. After picking up a couple, it's second and eight. Looking to throw, it's King. They'll run the screen. Bring in the heat. They make the stop, but not before the screen has hit him for a first down and much more really good execution by this offense. One of the things I love about this offense is they're very versatile in their passing attack. They throw to receivers and tight ends, and the screen game is big as well. This guy is a weapon, and you're seeing that here early. Motion by the back forces the defense to adjust. Shoots it to the left, and he drops it just a little too slippery in the hands. Just got to finish the play through the wide receiver. You got to look that one in and complete it. It's a bad drop. And the incompletion brings up a second down for this offense. Wide receiver coming across in motion. Touch pass on the jet sweep. Keeps the legs moving. And these little touch passes, man, they're just the easiest completions ever for quarterbacks. Palmer, I bet you would have loved being able to just flip it forward. That counts as to your completion percentage, which is good. And then it's all run after the catch, so pretty easy for a QB. You wouldn't have been the only All-American in this booth, David, if I were allowed to put, have push passes <laughs> when I was playing quarterback. I'll tell you that. It is so hard to defend. It's so hard to seal that edge, especially when this guy's full speed ahead coming around the inside. Got his man downfield. And they got the defense on that one, and they get it to the 29-yard line. And listen, the defense knew coming into this one, they were going to target him early and often. He is a weapon, and there's no mystery where the quarterback's going to be looking on critical down and distances. Let's see how they're able to cover him throughout the rest of this game. The Yellow Jackets want to crank the tempo.
got a man in the middle. They bring him down, but he's got a first and goal from the 10. One of the nice things about RPOs is that it's a slow developing mesh between the QB and running back, and that allows these receivers time to get vertically downfield and work their routes. You saw it right there on that play. Time winding down in the quarter as they come to the line. They'll keep it on the ground for first and goal. They get him down after a four-yard gain to the six. We're through one period, and these receivers are showing out big time. Take a look at the stats. Lots of time left, and we're ready to get back to it and open the second period. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. He's got it down to the one-yard line right on the doorstep of Pater. Well, he gets tackled down at the one-yard line, so offensively, do you feel confident enough on third here trying to hand it off again? Yeah, and I'm taking both these downs, and I'm coming downhill. I'm running the football trying to get this in the end zone. I only got a yard to go. I got to be physical. I'm trying to power it in. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Second quarter might not be gamble time, but inside the three, Palmer, I've got the green light. I'm going for this. I am, too. And you're essentially running a two-point play here, right? You've got a play you practice all week long. That's the play you dial up right here. So the offense will try to punch it in here on fourth and goal from the one. Trying to bully their way in. And he'll find the end zone. goal situation bring in the beef the goal line package all the heavy guys the tight ends and just pound the rock when you need it running back falling forward getting the touchdown offense just went big on your booty Lining up for the PAT. And it's up and good. To a drive there of 84 yards. And they capped it off with a one-yard plunge. After that latest answer tied things up, just about set to kick it away again. And he takes this from inside the five. He was looking for more running room, but none to be found as he stopped at the 23. Guys, here comes that Florida State offense back onto the field. The give out of the gun. Into a mass of giant bodies. We'll call it a one-yard gain to the 24. The run game just has not been working for this offense all game long. We saw it on that last play as well. Just not getting enough push up front on the offensive line. They haven't been physical. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Now they'll run the draw. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. A lot of times those draw plays are successful when their defensive linemen run up the field, rush the quarterback, create some holes. Not this time. The defensive line did a really good job understanding that, seeing the draw play, getting the running back, getting his butt on the ground. A third and long coming up here. That's caught. It's Williams. And he's not going to get there. The defense stands tall and makes the stop. You got to love that on defense. One of the most critical statistics out there is how do you play on third down? How do you prevent the opponent from keeping drives alive? Right there, tackling the catch. You gave up the completion. What do you do? You set up fourth and long. You're going to get the ball back. Go get some water and sell it. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. Fair catch called for, but there is a flag on the play. We'll have to sort it Personal out. Personal foul. foul. Roughing the kicker. Oh. Kicker. Defense. Defense. The officials offer the deal, and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. From the gun, the running back has it. We'll give him a couple on that one. Second and eight coming up. And those physical runs take a toll. It might not be a big game now, but 
down the road, third, fourth quarter, late in the ball games, they tend to turn into bigger runs. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. Back to throw. It's Uyangalale. Just a short pass to the tight end. He's brought down solid. Pick up a little bit short of the first down. It's so important that this offense is able to stay on schedule. What that means is keeping third downs manageable. That last completion to the tight end accomplished just that. Really nice play. Passing game very effective on second down. What about here on third? Got his man quickly. He's got first down yardage as they move it to the 44. Really nice job there by the quarterback, understanding that it's zone coverage on third down. You're going to have to find someone working into a soft spot, get the ball out of your hands quickly, make an accurate throw, and pick up the first. Well done. And the Seminoles have it with a first and ten. They'll leave it with him. A solid pickup there before the defense is able to make the stop. Hey, five to six yards a pop. I don't know if you guys are really good at that, but that usually equals a first down every couple carries. So don't forget about the run game. Keep them honest. Pound that run. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. He'll do it himself. A strong tackle and wrap up from the junior. Well, the QB decided to keep it on that one. And listen, if you had his athleticism, you'd want to keep it too. Almost every time they run these types of option plays. But he's just going to have to do a good job of understanding when to hand it off, when to pitch it, try to keep this defense on their heels and read his keys. He's got a lot of talent. Just got to make sure he's making the right decisions moving forward. Gets it out quickly. Just what they'd hoped for on third down as they've got a first at the 32. He might have expected to see this DB up in his receiver's kitchen instead. Nice little zone, and they pick up the first. Man, offenses are getting so good, Reese, at seeing the holes in the zone, knowing you're in zone, knowing where to sit down, how to make it an easy pitch and catch for the quarterback, and that's what it was on third and short. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And defense nowadays, they don't look at stats of what is the yards per rush. They look at how many negative plays they can bring. Because why? Now you look at second down, man, it just became very predictable for this offense. Nice job creating the loss on first down. Dropping back, it's Uyangalale. Unloads to the wideout. Can't make the catch, and it'll be third down. He had that thing and just lost his concentration. Trying to get the receiver on a drag route and working through all the bodies and traffic, but there's just too much happening. I don't think he saw the throw real well and it falls incomplete. They've methodically worked the ball down the field. 11th way of the drive coming up, but this one third and long. They're bringing heat. He's taking the shot. And they won't make the connection, looking to make a big play there. And the offense got themselves in a tough situation. Third and long, so hard to execute, especially when the field starts to shrink. But the good news is they got a field goal in their back pocket. And on fourth down, they'll try to salvage the drive with a field goal. He'll have to generate power and some accuracy. A 50-yarder from the left hash. And he missed it. No good. And after the missed field goal, guys, we are still locked up. That last drive, an absolute aerial assault for the touchdown, Jesse. It was a nice job in play calling, too, David, just giving the quarterback some easy looks and reads so he could go out and make some. And he knew exactly where to go with the football. Everything looked really, really easy. He was hot. The ball was coming out of his hands. The defense better do something different. And the Yellow Jackets want to pick up the tempo. He'll come out throwing on first down. Complete to the right. They get him down at the 34-yard line. Give him 15 yards on the pickup and a first down. 
And a really good job by the quarterback being very decisive. He saw his matchup. He went for it. He attacked it. Got the positive gain. I would say he's going to find that guy a few more times today. They've got a first and 10 at the 34. Looking to pass. It's Kane. Pressure coming. Going to take a shot at this DB. Can't make the connection in the defense. Putting on the heat and forcing the incompletion. And there's an example of what happens when the quarterback doesn't have a chance to set his feet. The pressure just forced him to have to work off schedule a little bit. And I think because of that, wasn't able to be as accurate as he wanted to be. Looking to throw on second down. Got it in the middle. It's Singleton. He'll be brought down at the three-yard line. An explosive play in the passing game has him on the doorstep. Well, after that last play, you can see how electrifying this guy is and how special he is after he makes the catch. If I'm on offense, I'm trying to find a lot of ways to get him touches in this game. The Yellow Jackets trying to cash it in on first and goal. Here's the snap, looking to throw. And he's got it! Touchdown, Georgia Tech! And I just love the execution by this offense. Late in the half, man, you want to take the lead, you want to get that momentum on your side, and they do it. They finish it with the passing game. I'll tell you what, keep that passing game up, you can keep this lead, keep the momentum, and keep putting up numbers. Getting set for the point after. And the PAT gives him a 14-7 lead. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And they finish it up with a three-yard scoring toss. So they got the touchdown now, going to put it in the hands of their defense to finish off this half. On the move from inside is five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. The Seminoles have it back. They'll try to get that offensive spear flaming. This late in the half, you're behind. You'd love to create something before the break to build momentum, Jesse. But you've also had some miscues on offense, a big part of why you're losing the game right now. I'd take it into halftime, make my adjustments, and come out ready in the second half. Yeah, I'm going to take it in halftime too, Paul. But I'm trying to put some points up right here. Be aggressive, set the tone, be like, hey, listen, this is what you're going to get in the second half, so find something really quickly you can go to. And they're able to force him out of bounds after a short pickup. And you see so many smart wide receivers, so many smart tight ends nowadays that they know where the holes in those zones are, and they work with their quarterback, and they find them, and they sit down in them and make big plays. It's tough to sit back in zone against such smart players nowadays. Looking to throw it to Uyunglele. Quickly complete. And he's brought to the ground, but not before he gets enough for the first down. There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. The Seminoles getting set on first and ten. He's going to pass. Going for the big putt. Fires into traffic. Picked off. And they come up with a big play to make sure no more points go on the board for the end of the half. I love when people start to understand what they're doing defensively. If they're going to pass the football and that's like where they're going to live, well, I'm going to live and die. I'm going to bring more defensive backs on the field so I can cover more of these speed guys that they have out there. Great job by the defensive back, breaking on the football, making the INT, making the DC look very smart. The Georgia Tech offense rolls back onto the field. That last touchdown drive was surgical through the air, Jesse. It sure was, and that's why this offense is so dangerous, David, because they can score in a hurry because of how efficient they are throwing the football. And welcome to modern college football. That's what it is. Spread you out, find my playmakers, make quick decisions, and really put defenses in a difficult situation. We played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. All right, guys. Looks like we've got a great game day atmosphere today in Atlanta. And I get it. 
A lot of coaches will say the difference between winning and losing comes down to stopping big plays and getting big plays. But if you ask me, it's more about how good you are on third down and how efficient you are in keeping drives alive. Those two stats can help you break the will of even the best defenses and help you come out on top. And with that, let's send it back to the guys on the flats at Bobby Dodd Stadium. The Seminoles will boot it away to start the second half. Let's see what he can do with the return. Georgia Tech has the ball back, and here comes the Yellow Jacket offense. They had this lead to start the third quarter because of the passing game. Didn't get a lot done on the ground. They did, but the quarterback is in a rhythm. That was obvious in the first half. And so this first drive, you want to continue that. You want to see good decision-making. You want to see him playing on time. And as always, delivering the football with that. I, I mean, I don't know how I don't give him the football. It's the reason I built the lead. He's the guy that I can trust. This offense is built around him. So I expect more of the same here in the second half. And he really needed to hold on to that one, but it was not loose, and third down is coming. That's what I'm talking about. That is how you close, and when a guy's going to make a catch, you make sure he doesn't make it. Physicality, using your pads, running through them, and guess what? Not only this play does he feel it, next time he tries to go over the middle or feels footsteps, this will pay dividends. He makes the connection. A quick tackle made, but he's got plenty for the first down. And because the receiver was able to drive back to the QB on that curl route against man coverage, he was able to create a little bit of separation between him and the defender, and that was a big key in getting that first down. They'll start this one from the 29 on first down. Looking for a physical attack from the gun. He gets those chains moving, gets it out to the 42-yard line. In halftime in this locker room, there's a lot of positive things to talk about. You got the lead. But you know what else will be positive, Palmer? Get the running game going early in this second half. You're absolutely right here. And I think this coaching staff is going to try to put this game on the offensive line a little bit. Let these guys take this thing over, be physical, and push this defense around. Off the play fake on first down to throw. Missed his receiver there. It's incomplete. After the quarterback and receiver failed to hook up, they'll try it again on second down. Back to pass. It's Kane. Throws to the wideout. He's got it. And a big game there. He's knocked down immediately at the 45. That's a really good example of why offensive coordinators script plays. You know the down and distance, and you know which routes can get you to the stick. So there's no wasted time. That coordinator got the play in early to his quarterback, knowing that his players were going to be able to execute. Moving the running back, forcing the defense to adjust. Unloads it downfield. Picked off. He'll try to take it back. And a big return after the INT sets up the offense for this possession. Most defenses are lucky if you have one good covering corner. Fewer are lucky if you have two. They've got three DBs, three corners that can play at the same time in their nickel package that they feel can go mano a mano with anyone in the country. And you saw it on that last play coming away with the pick. Guys, here comes that Florida State offense back onto the field. That last drive was promising for a while, but you just can't mess it up at the end with the pick, Jesse. No, you've got to be able to finish drives, especially in this game, if you're going to win it, David. They've got to be able to eliminate the mental mistakes. Yeah, and I don't think you get conservative or play it safe. You can trust your guy. I think you put the ball right back in his hands and let him do his thing. Didn't get much done on that first play of the drive. It's second and 11. Grab behind the line. It's Douglas. They're able to get him stopped just shy of the first down mark. We see another catch by this guy. This defense is going to need to do a better job of tackling the catch. In coverage, I know they want to slap the ball away, but you can't do it and force the incompletion. You've got to at least make sure you're able to drag him down to the ground as soon as he catches the ball. 
to the ground to try to pick up the first. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. Well, they want to come out and try to get the run game established, but up front defensively, they made a play. They gave up nothing on that one. Got to find some breathing room if you're going to establish yourself on the ground, and there wasn't any that time. Yeah, Reese, I wonder now if this offense is maybe going to try to get to the perimeter of the field and see if they can use their speed to hurt this defense. Here's the fair catch, and he'll make it close to the 20-yard line. The rambling wreck offense rolls back onto the field. Boy, they had that last drive moving a little bit, David, but then the mistake just crushed them. Yeah, and those mistakes are going to happen. You're going to throw the football, you're going to throw interceptions, but I think I stay aggressive with this offense. I get back to what I did in the first part of that drive, what made me successful. I agree, David. Just turn the page if you're a quarterback, right? On this drive, you did a lot of good things there leading up to that pick. Forget about it, move on, play the next play. Motion from the offense. Misfired on first down, back to the air on second. Fires to the right. How about that play to get a hand in there and force the incompletion? Man, that's a couple bad throws. Last possession obviously ends in an interception by this quarterback, and now you throw another one, you know, in harm's way. You got to make sure you're throwing to the open guy. Make sure you're taking care of that football. We can't have any more turnovers. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. Another incompletion on third down. Every defense in the country talks about getting offenses in predictable third and long situations where I can bring on more speedsters and I know the pass is coming so I can have more success. And the Yellow Jackets will try to pin them back with a punt. The punter going to get his first work of the afternoon. Excellent coverage that time. Didn't give him any room to set up a big return. The Seminoles have it back. They'll try to get that offensive spear flaming. Out of the shoot. Quick toss to the right. And the defense settled in to stop that one for a short game. I love this defense's ability to fight off blocks and rally to the football. They do such a great job pursuing that wide receiver screen to only allow a minimal game and no first down. Offense gets set for second down. To the air. It's Uyangalale. And that pass will be jarred loose on second down. That brings up third down. some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. Trying to move the sticks on third down through the air. Fires to the right. He makes a catch. And they'll move the chains and get it to the 47-yard line. These two guys, just on the same wavelength, they make clutch connections all the time. And that's practice, man. That's all summer. That's all spring. Just so many hundreds and hundreds and thousands of balls where you know exactly when that guy's going to break. You know he's a stud. You're going to feed him, especially on these third down situations. Not much of a chance there. He just had to get rid of it to avoid the sack. And sometimes you've got to know when to give it up. Right? As a quarterback, you feel it. You can't hold that second too long when bad things can really happen. You can tell the clock went off and he was throwing that puppy away. Now on second down after the incompletion. He's looking to throw. That pressure got to him, and he just had to chuck it out of bounds. Now facing a third and long. They're going to throw it again. Another incompletion on third down. Well, after struggling so much in the first half, he thought they would have made some adjustments here at halftime to see if they can open up this passing game. But early on in the second half, you're just not really able to get that done. Incompletion on third down in your own end. You're expecting them to punt. And the Knowles will send out the punt unit. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. He will not make a fair catch. Feel the punt and bring it back. 
They'll get him corralled and down at about the 19-yard line. To the air, it's King. He's got the tight end. That's a really good tackle there, giving up some size and still making the play. So surprised we have not been calling this guy's name more. He's one of the best tight ends in the country, but give the defense credit. They have had an outstanding game plan limiting him so far. That's only his second catch of the game. Quick release on the RPO. There to make the tackle, but the big throw is good enough to give them a first down. Using him out of the slot, he has just been unstoppable. And I love putting dynamic athletes in the slot that I can move around, that I can put in motion, that I can, I can make him go in or out. I can put him off the ball so you can't get hands on him, and they've really featured this guy today. Off the play fake on first down. Fires a ball, and now it's picked off. Takes it the other way. And they capitalize not only on the pick, but the great return to give the offense tremendous field position. Timing has to be so good. When you're throwing at his own defense over the middle of the field, the ball's got to come out specifically on time because these windows close really quickly. Ball there thrown a little bit late. As a result, it's an INT. Guys, here comes that Florida State offense back onto the field. They had to punt it away on their last possession, but man, what great field position this time. I mean, this is awesome. Like, last possession didn't go great. Now you're set up. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. The defense just simply not fooled by the play action. Oftentimes in offense, you're hoping the run thing's going to slow down those pass rushers, but man, oh man, they had their ears pinned back. First down, sack pushes it back. Now it's second down. Back to pass. It's a Uyunglele. And he dropped it. It looked for all the world like that would be a catch, and he just got too excited. And that's one the offense just needs to be able to hit, right? That's a completion they should be able to hit in their sleep. Receivers got to do a better job. And they don't want to waste this great field position here on third and long. Looking to throw, and he needs a bunch. Makes the grab. He gets it in. Touchdown, Florida State. You know, sometimes as a play caller, you just don't have to overthink things. I've got a guy who's faster than your guys, and he's just going to run straight down the field. I'm going to throw it way down the field. He's going to make the catch, and we're going to score a touchdown, and that's Pretty much what just happened there. PAT unit on the field. And the extra point was made without incident, and we're tied up here in the third. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. And they cap it off with a 32-yard touchdown pass. All tied up and just about set to kick it away. He'll bring it back from inside his spot. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. The Georgia Tech offense rolls back onto the field. After throwing the pick on the last drive, need to take care of the ball this time, Jesse. We're going to find out a lot about this quarterback right here, too. How does he fight through adversity after that last drive? Yeah, clear the mechanism, move on. That, that's a part of it, right? If you're going to be a great player, you've got to learn how to handle these mistakes and move on. they wanted to get the ball to their playmakers and both receivers have come up big through three can't wait to see how this fourth quarter is going to go and see who can come out on top in this barn burner quick pass on the jet motion Nice gain of six, leaving them with third and four. 
Well, and on these little push passes, timing is so important. You're trying to snap it right as he's getting a full head of steam. When he gets the ball, he's hitting the outside, and David, it puts the defense in such a difficult spot. You immediately have to be rotating when you see that motion, so everybody's got to communicate and kind of bump over. That's why offenses love to run it. Just It makes the defense communicate and see if you can just get him out of the spot. He can't make the catch. Had it right in his hands, and it'll be fourth down. Defense did a great job. Third and short on the opponent's side of the field. They're expecting quick throw. Everybody, they dug their heel on the ground. They're able to break on the ball, force the incompletion. The Yellow Jackets will line up to punt it away. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. He'll settle for some pretty good field position and make the fair catch at around the 35. The Seminoles have it back. They'll try to get that offensive spear flaming. Pulls it, fired complete. Stopped at the 47 after a 10-yard gain. Love the play call on the RPO. That time the defender bites on the run fake, and that opens up the window for the slant coming in behind it. Nice job. The offense will put it in play from the 47 on first and 10. The run to the left. And a nice run there before the defense finally makes the stop. I know it's sexy to throw the football, but if you can pound it away and get these kind of gains, they will just add up, wear the defense down, get first downs, and ultimately get some points. Good spot after that seven-yard pickup on first down. It's second and three. The give is to Williams. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And you can tell that play went nowhere from the start. It was definitely a great play by that defender. Oh, yeah, he got the backfield so quick, the running back had absolutely no chance. They need to get a little closer for a field goal try, and they've got to do it in a hurry. Looking for a man. It's Uyanga Lele. He's got an open man. He gets it to the 38-yard line, and they'll pick up a fresh set of downs. The Seminoles are moving quickly down the field. Off play action on first down. He wants to take the top off. And it goes through his hands. Oh, he had an explosive play right there for the taking, but couldn't reel it in. That's one of those plays where you're going, man, he probably could have made that. The defense wasn't great on the play, but guess what? It goes down as an incompletion. Those are one of those bullets that you've got to dodge throughout a game to get the win to limit those big plays. A little screen to the running back. Open space at the 25. He's run out of bounds, but not before. Turning in a big pickup and moving the sticks for a first down. Well, they pick up the first down there on the screen. I love the offensive line there, allowing the pass rush to get way up the field. They completely baited their guys, made them think that they got beaten, that they were going to get the sack, and then they sneak the running back screen right in behind them and pick up the first. before he's finally stopped a terrific run after the catch. This offense has a lot of different ways they can attack you, and you're going to see the entire playbook at work in this game. Throwing it, running it, and getting guys the ball out on the perimeter. Great job. And the offense is so close to the go-ahead score, they can smell it here in the fourth quarter. Touchdown, no! And with that, they move out front here in the fourth. Precision blocking up front created the open lane, and the running back followed it beautifully. Yeah, um, it's pretty easy to follow an offensive line that makes those holes and just gives you a caravan all the way to the end zone. What an unbelievable job blocking up front. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. The extra point is good, and now in the fourth, they're up by a touchdown and an extra point. 
They took it 64 yards right down the field. And they finished it off with the score from the four. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. Here he comes from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Georgia Tech has the ball back, and here comes the Yellow Jacket offense. The last time we saw this offense, we had to look quick. It was a three and out, Jesse. He just had no rhythm in that last drive. So someone's going to have to step up and make a play, David, and get this thing going. Yeah, let's find some juice. Find your guy. Find those plays that you know you can run inside out, forward, backwards. Get some first downs. Get some positive momentum. Didn't get much done on that first play of the drive. It's second and 11. On the run, it's King. Takes the easy completion. They get him down after he makes the catch. And that's kind of a lot of today's running game, right? Spit the ball out quick, get it to your playmakers in space, get positive yards. It's uh, Instead of running the ball a couple yards up the middle, now you just spit it out wide, and a lot of times if you break a few tackles, it could be even bigger. That last completion still leaving them with a third down. From the gun, wants to pass. Coming after it. And the pressure was too much. They get him at the 15. Just a great job defensively, making him go through his progressions, and he really didn't have time to do it. And that's exactly what you do in zone coverage. You drop in your spots, you read the quarterback's eyes, make sure you take away that quick stuff, and a great job rushing the passer and getting the sack. And the Yellow Jackets line up to punt it away. He'll try to really get into this one. And the punt team able to swing him to the ground. Guys, here comes that Florida State offense back onto the field. RPO complete to open the drive. And just a short, safe pass play. They pick up a few. This quarterback right now is in a groove, and he's doing a nice job in pre-snap. He's reading the coverage, and he's getting an idea of where he wants to go with the football. That's why the ball's coming out of his hands so quickly. That's why he seems like he's in a great rhythm. We've reached a two-minute warning in this offense, trying to milk this clock and keep time on their side. They're in control. The clock is their friend. You'd have to expect another run here on second and six. They'll run the ball. The clock is on their side. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Timeout called there by the defense, desperate to get the ball back and save as much time as possible. This third down play might be the last chance for this defense to stay in the game. To the air. It's Uyagalale. Got his man in the middle. Quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. Man, this quarterback is going to have to be deadly accurate here in this two-minute situation, right? And that's really what he's had to be all game long. He hasn't had a lot of yards because the coverage has just been so tight. He's had to be pinpoint perfect. It's been hard just to find completions, no doubt. It's going to be the same thing here in this two-minute drive. Defense uses a timeout quickly, trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. Wouldn't be surprised to see them go right back to the run on second down and maybe put this thing away. Out of the gun, the running back has it. And you can forget running in the middle against this defense. It's hard to run on a defense that comes off the ball like that and runs to the football like that. Good luck, no holes in anyway. They're facing a third down. To the ground to try to move the chains. They are on the move as they pick up the first down. They'll spot it at the 28. That's got to be demoralizing if you're the defense. You're trailing. You need to get the ball back. you got to get off the field, but you can't stop the run when they're going between the tackles. This defense is going to have to get a lot more physical, especially in the middle. So with the late lead, they're ready to just drain the clock in victory formation. And the quarterback's just going to take a knee. 